My name is Tara and I'm the program director here at Perennial and today we're going to be showing you how to make some reclaimed garden markers using some materials that you'll find in your house and we're teaching this in conjunction with the virtual green living festival uh, with the Earthway Center at the Missouri Botanical Garden. So let's get started. To make this project you're going to need an old aluminum can, some wire hangers or twine, a hole punch, some scissors, a pen that doesn't have any ink anymore, a ruler, a box cutter, scrap paper and pencil, a pair of pliers and snips, and optionally you can have a set of metal stamps, a hammer, a sharpie marker, a stapler, and a flat surface to work on. So we're gonna start with an empty can that's all dried out. I do like to use uh, cans that had like a light soft drink or maybe a water in them so that it doesn't have a sticky residue on the inside, but either way, just give it a good rinse and let it dry out. Then we're gonna take our box cutter and we're gonna drop the blade on it. And I'm gonna start to cut the top part off right where it has this bevel here. So I'm gonna twist that blade in and then kind of gently saw it. And you'll definitely not want to have a kid do this part of it. Once I get this started, I'll be able to actually insert my scissors in after a little bit. So I think I've got enough cut that I can actually switch to scissors, which is a little bit safer and a little bit easier. So I'm going to go ahead and put those in there and finish cutting on the round. And now I want to cut down to the bottom as well. And then start to shift and cut this bottom edge at a straight angle. Next, we're gonna take our piece that we've just cut out and we're gonna use the edge of a table to flatten it out. Before I flatten this edge on a table, I'm gonna go ahead and cut off the jaggedy edge that I started with the box cutter first so I don't have a really sharp edge that can hurt me. And try to keep your scissor strokes as long and even as possible to minimize jaggedy edges. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna see how this soda can is curling in on itself. I'm gonna flip it against the edge of the table opposite the side that's curling in and just start to rub it along the edge so that it flattens out. And that flattens it right out so that it's not curling on itself anymore. So now we've got our canvas that we can begin working with and we're gonna learn a technique for creating an embossed texture to create some text on our garden labels. So I'm gonna take a piece of scrap paper first and make the outline of what I want my label to look like. I just have a little template that I've traced from another shape that I found here in our space. So I'm gonna go ahead, trace that so I know what my finished label is gonna look like on a piece of scrap paper. And now I can design this based on what I want it to say and what I want it to look like. So I'm gonna make one for my mint plant outside. So I'm gonna go ahead and just draw out the letters that I want. Making sure that I'm filling that space really nicely. All right, so now I know what I want my label to look like. I'm gonna use this text that I've created on a piece of scrap paper, and I'm gonna use it on our soda can to make sure I transfer it correctly. So you're gonna notice that our can is going to have a colorful side and our silver flat side. Ultimately, we want our design to be on this silver flat side. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to lay out the text face up with the side that I want to be face up. And I'm going to very lightly, with a pen that doesn't have any ink, trace over these letters. And then we'll flip it over and emboss it from the other side. So we're gonna just apply a light pressure. And I like to have like a cutting board or some kind of soft surface underneath so that that aluminum can kind of sink into that surface. And I'm just gonna trace every letter from 
top to bottom. Feel free to print out some type from the internet if you want, or you can just do hand-drawn text like I've done here. So on my silver side, I'm gonna see a very lightly embossed text. I actually want this text to pop up on this side. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna flip it over and I'm gonna be able to see a very light texture on this side that I'm then gonna take my pen that doesn't write anymore and I'm going to apply some pressure and trace that so that it pops out on the front side. So this can be kind of tricky to see um, when you have a lot of patterns and textures. So I'm gonna get kind of close and switch my angle a little bit because sometimes it'll change in the light. And again, I'm just tracing those lines. If you don't have a pen that doesn't have any ink, you can also find uh, styluses that will do the same thing. Or you can take uh, like a dull pencil, just something that's not so sharp that it's gonna pierce through the soda can. We really want it to apply a soft pressure. A softened bamboo skewer will work as well. But a pen really is like the perfect kind of texture. All right, so now I can start to see that my text is coming through on the other side. If it's not a strong enough pop for you, you can go back and trace those letters again. You can also kind of counter emboss by going back. And again, I'm taking a kind of soft bamboo skewer here and help those lines to pop out by tracing around the part that's right next to them. That'll just help raise just the letters that we're making. So you can already see that this part's starting to pop out. I can do that all the way around to really help my text come to the surface. You can also do this with your dull pen that doesn't write. I found that mine still had a little bit of ink in it, so I didn't want to write on the front. And if you want to, after you do this text, if you want to add any extra symbols or shapes, like a little plant shape, you can do that as well. But first, I'm gonna go ahead and actually trace my entire shape onto here. And I could also have cut this guy out, but I already have this little template here, so I'm gonna center up my text. Go ahead and trace that. And then we'll cut this out. And I can just use my scissors to cut this out this time. That's looking good. I'll go ahead and take my scissors and just trace along that line. If you want, you can wear some like leather gloves at this point so you don't snag yourself on the edges. But again, try and keep your cuts in as few strokes as possible to minimize jaggedy edges. And you can come back and kind of curve those ends too if they didn't end up super perfect. The next thing I can do to help uh, kind of minimize the sharpness of that edge is to flip it upside down and take your dull pen and apply pressure really close to the edge. Something like an eighth of an inch, a quarter of an inch here from the edge. And you'll kind of be able to see that the can itself is flipping up. What we're doing is we're creating a little beveled edge. And that bevel is just gonna help to dull that edge from the front. So that it's not super duper sharp. And that bevel adds kind of a nice accent that just kind of makes it look a little bit more formal. The next thing I can do is I can take a little hole punch and I can punch a hole in here to create a little spot for this to hang from. And next I'm gonna show you how to use a wire hanger to make a stake for your garden. If you want it to be hanging freely on a shepherd's hook like this one is, you can actually take a hanger like one from a dry cleaner and they actually already have these curbs kind of made for you. I can go ahead and break off the cardboard part from the bottom. 
And these are great to use for pollinator hotels in your backyard. And since it already has these little curves here, I can actually just take a nice pair of plier snips, chop it off at one end, and I'll be able to drop my label right here onto this hook and then cinch it closed with a pair of pliers. So I can go ahead and drop my label onto the hook end here and just take a pair of pliers and cinch that closed. And then this is ready to stake into my garden. If you'd like to make a double staked label like this one, really you'll want to make more of a rectangular format for this. And we're going to need to hole punch four times instead of just one. And this guy will be able to slide off and on of our double hanger stake. So instead of using that other style of hanger that didn't have a bottom, we're going to want a full wire hanger for this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to snip it off pretty close to the top here. And then I'm going to snip it in a similar spot down here at the middle of the hanger. So you're able to get a couple of different stakes from this type of hanger. Now I'm going to actually kind of unbend this second soft bend that was here. I'll leave the hard bend that was there. I need to consider how wide I want this top part to be so that it can slide into the holes that we're going to create in our label. So for this one, I've spaced my two holes here. Looks like I've spaced them about an inch and a quarter apart. So that's where I need to make the bend on my hanger. So I'm gonna make a little mark with my finger here or I can use a Sharpie. I'm gonna take my regular pliers here and use them to create a hard bend there. If these are at two different heights, you can go ahead and snip this off so that they're a little bit more even. And now I'll be able to go ahead and slide from the top down so that my label will read face up when I stake it into the ground. And this guy's ready to stake into your garden. Now I'd like to show you how to make a little bit more complicated of a label. And this is really for if you have some specialty tools at home, which are some metalworking stamps. So these are, instead of being hand embossed, these are done with metalworking stamps. Um, since aluminum is really thin, you can also use leather working stamps. Um, it just might dull it a little bit as you work with them. So metal stamps are really the best. So for this one, I want to start with a larger piece than necessary of a rectangular piece of soda can. To get the feel of what my stamps are going to look like, it's great to do some tests on a scrap piece like I've started to do down here. For the surface that I like to work on, I like to have a softer piece of wood underneath. Traditionally with metal working stamps, you would have some metal underneath where you're working, but I found with aluminum that because it's really nice and soft, um, it can absorb into the wood much nicer. So uh, I'll take my stamp, make sure it's face up, and I can take a hammer and give it a couple of taps. Typically you want to give it about two to three taps and make sure it's really grabbing into the surface. If I tap too light, it might not show up all the way. And if I tap too hard, I'm actually gonna break through the surface of my soda can. It started to splinter through the other side. So that first one that I did, about two to three medium taps is really where you wanna be. So before I actually cut down my shape when I'm making a stamped label, I like to go ahead and stamp out in the middle of my soda can first and then kind of cut around it, because sometimes it can end up a little wiggly depending on where I place it. I went ahead and I pulled out some letters to spell dill, so that's what we're going to make. And what you're gonna notice if you have these metal working stamps is that the letters are in reverse. So you really wanna pay attention to that because you might look at it and once you actually place it, it might be upside down from where you think it's going to be. So if I'm looking at it and it looks like the letter D, 
I actually need to reverse it when I place it down onto my surface. So I'm gonna go ahead and do a couple taps here to start it off. I got my D down. Ah, it's gonna be really nice and easy because I don't really need to think about it. And in terms of placing these, I'm gonna place it really, really close to the letter that I just did. So that they have a nice spacing when we actually uh, see them completed. Again, I'm looking at my L and thinking about how it's gonna translate so that it's the correct way. Feel free to, right before you stamp one, test it on a scrap piece so that you don't waste any. All right, so I've got mine all stamped here. The next thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make these letters pop. And a little trick that I like to use is just to take a simple Sharpie marker and trace over the inside of those letters. Nice and strong. And then I like to take a little scrap t-shirt rag and just buff off that Sharpie marker before it completely dries. So this is just an old t-shirt. I'm gonna just buff off from the surface. All right, so now I can see my letters really nice and clear. Now I'm gonna go ahead and cut the rectangle around it. And I'm gonna go pretty wide, and the reason for that is, with this one, to prevent any sharp edges from being visible, I really did a kind of wide fold on these and stapled it around my hanger. It's a little bit different than the method we just did, um, but this will just help prevent any sharp edges from being visible. So I'm really kind of limited here because of how close I did this to the edge. So I've got this about an inch over here. I'm gonna mimic that on the other side. Make a mark at an inch. Go ahead and drop that line down. And now in terms of my spacing for the height, this is really up to you. This one ended up about an inch and a quarter, and I've got a little bevel on the top and the bottom. So I will go a half inch from the top and a half inch from the bottom. Drag my lines all the way across. And now I'm gonna go ahead and cut this out with my scissors. All right, first I'm gonna bevel my long edges. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a ruler Just about an eighth of an inch from the edge. I'm gonna go ahead and apply a hard pressure with my pen to cause that to kind of bevel up. And then I'm gonna finish that fold on both sides after I get them scored. So now I'm gonna take those edges and just fold them up so that they flatten into themselves. Be careful with this step so you don't pinch yourself. Now that'll be kind of soft from the top, I'll go ahead and use my pen to just flatten it out. We've got the top done, we'll go ahead and do the bottom. All right, so we've got the top and the bottom done. Now I'd like to go ahead and crease the two sides here, just at the edge, and then we'll create it so that it can wrap around your hanger. So I'm gonna do the exact same thing. Come about an eighth of an inch from the side here. Use my pen to create a score line that will then fold afterwards.
Go ahead and fold that down, crease it, So I've gotten rid of all my sharp edges now. They're all kind of folded into the back. Now I'd like to start creating my wire hanger stake and folding it around that. So with that same technique we used earlier to make a stake, I'm gonna just use that same one that we cut out earlier to make our dill stake because it actually ended up working really nicely in terms of size. But if you're making one and you wanna consider the size, just think about uh, the spacing that you have on each side of your letters to determine how wide you want this to be. So I'm going to go ahead and center this over upside down. And what I'm going to do is just start to curl this around the edge. So I'm going to start on one side and just wrap it onto itself. And do the same on the other side. So that's looking pretty good from the front. And now we can use a really common supply that you guys probably already have at your house of a stapler. And I'm gonna come in pretty close to this edge here and I'm gonna go from the top down and just add a little staple here to get this secured. Do that again on the other side. And this will be able to still slide freely up and down on your stake but this guy is ready to use in your garden. You might notice with some of mine that have been out in my garden, a, a metal hanger is going to kind of change in its patina. It does get a little bit of a rusty patina as you go, but your aluminum can should stay really nice and bright for some time. Thanks for joining Perennial to make some upcycled garden markers for the Virtual Green Living Festival. Can't wait to see you in a perennial class soon.